stretch generally requires less manpower and is often faster than using ground or area ladders and also faster than certain types of stairs. Those stairs include those that wrap around an elevator. We can stretch with a rope or take hose up a fire escape into a patio or landing through a window or to a rooftop. As a general rule, when there are already two lines in operations in the stairwell, or putting a third line in would hamper movement up or down the stairs. Ropes are almost always faster than stretching via stairs or standpipes in open parking garages. Due to the large pipe runs and dry systems, you often can get water on a car fire quicker using a standard fire line and a rope. In large, tall, multiple dwellings without standpipes, sometimes when extreme distances are encountered or difficult stairs, it might be easier to stretch via a rope than to stretch excess hose in the stairwell. A single length of the hose will easily stretch to the fifth floor where it would take four to five lengths to stretch via a standard return type stairwell to the fifth floor. These pictures include examples of the types of buildings we might consider a rope stretch. Large apartments with open exterior walkways, tall multiple dwellings where excess hose is needed to make it to the upper floors, or there are already two hose lines in operations in a stairwell or an open deck parking garage. When performing the rope stretch, you should first consider the fire location and where the fire is going. As a general rule, just as in standpipe evolutions, it is safer to stretch to the floor below, stage hose there, and then advance on the fire area from a safe location. Try to avoid using unprotected areas and adjacent apartments. In buildings where multiple hose lines are already in a stairwell and an additional line is needed on the upper levels, it will be best to utilize a rope stretch for this task. We find it's best to drop the working end of the rope and retain the bag. Our rope has a carabiner and this provides adequate weight to guide and lower the rope. The problem with dropping the rope container or bag is that it sometimes the rope snags and you end up with a swinging rope pendulum or get stuck on a ledge, balcony, or other object protruding from the building and you can't free the rope. When hooking the rope to the hose, if you have a carabiner or a snap, you can just uh, hook that around the bale or the hose and quickly make that connection without tying knots. We found that it's easier to just leave your lead section of hose together of your inch and three quarter and hoist that whole entire lead section of hose in order to get it up and then have a working length readily available to start your deployment of your hose. Um, I, here we're hoisting just the nozzle and pulling the hose up the side of the building. With heavier hose, such as two and a half, this is almost the only way to do it. Either way you do this, hoisting your lead section or just a nozzle, in order to get this down and be good at it, it takes practice. As we see here, as we're watching this video, you see the lead firefighter deploying his fire line. We've already uh, entered the uh, stairwell of the building and made our way up the steps with the rope. So he's uh, deploying his bundle there. He's going to drop his lead section of hose, leave it together um, in this neat fold, not undo it, not flake it out. The rope's dropping down. He's going to hook it around the hose. Simple loop. Hook it back on itself with a carabiner, and then we're going to hoist it. To our point of service. In this building we have open balconies, long runs between the stairs, and we found that it's just easier to get the hose in service in this type of building in this fashion.